Hello, in this video, I wanted to talk about how we might go about styling the contact form module in Beaver Builder. Typically, this is something I've not needed to do because I tend to rely on a third party forms plugin, mostly in my case, that is Gravity Forms, which I've been using for eight years and I'm really happy with it. But I do think it is a slightly over the top solution when all that is needed is a simple contact form because with many of these forms, they do a lot and and they can be quite resource heavy in the back end, even if they're quite sensible about what they're outputting. And more recently, I've been working on a site which is employing something I talked about in a video going back a few years ago, where we have this pop up form. And this is a form that's in a Beaver Builder template. And I take the short code for that template and add it to the free pop up maker plugin. And on this particular site, I have that call to to action on the header. So it's going to call in the forms CSS on every single page here. And I notice how much more CSS, and that would be true of most form plugins, there is compared to the default in Beaver Builder. Also, I noticed that I had to go through a number of steps to make sure that Gravity Forms, in this case, was working with the pop-up maker, which I wouldn't need to do if I was just using Beaver Builder. So all of this has reignited my interest in the contact form, but it's not the prettiest of things by default. So this is kind of what it looks like if you drag it onto the page using the Beaver Builder theme. And I wanted to get some different examples. So it I'd be on my way if I start using this in the future. So what I've done as part of my Beaver Junction project is I've created a row template with a number of different designs. So let me just show you what I've got so far. Now, I am not an expert coder when it comes to CSS. So I've just done my best with this. I may add to this later. What I don't want to do in this video is to get too hung up about the individual styles here. And I'd like to concentrate more on what selectors are available for styling the form here and some other gotchas to watch out for when styling forms. It's something that I don't do, but there are some things to be aware of. I should just quickly mention here that there is some styling. These icons, which are backgrounds on the input fields, are not included in the CSS here. I have included the code on the article that goes with this and I can just show you where it is. It's over here. So let me just show you. It's in my customizer. Equally, I could have put this in my child themes styles.css file. The reason it's there is because it's using a method. It's got SVGs here, but they've been converted to data URLs. And what I find is that data URLs don't seem to work very well in the ACE editor, which is used by Beaver Builder. So I've kept this separate to that. I will do another video on this because because I think it's a technique that can apply to any types of forms. So I'll cover that as a separate video, but I can cover the basics here. What I'm using to create these SVGs is a wonderful resource called remixicon.com. So Davinda, I'm sure many of you will know in the Beaver Builder community, he's great with finding these resources. So thank you to him. So what you can do here is you can find an SVG. And if you go to this copy SVGs, you've got a data URL. So that's all I needed to do is to add that in here and needed to make sure that it wasn't repeating because that's not included and set the background position. So that's 95% over to the right over here and 50% height. That's all that was needed to make that happen. So I've included that. Interestingly enough, a video that I will be doing later on data URLs will include actually the work that I've been doing on this site. So that's the method that I'm using to create the these blobs in the background rather than just uploading SVGs or using transparent pings. And I think it's really fascinating. I'm looking forward to getting that video done because with being able to access the CSS within an SVG and manipulate it, it means that we can do some transformation. We can rotate some of these individual shapes, change the size of them, skew them, and just make one blob or a couple of blobs as we've got over here 
look entirely different just with the CSS itself. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. One other thing I do quickly mention in the article, which I think probably will need another video, is that if you are using the Beaver Builder plugin from something like Gravity Forms, then you might miss the fact that you had email login in Gravity Forms. So if your emails weren't getting delivered, you would at least have a record. There are some plugins, very lightweight, that do that. Also, I want to do a video because I can talk a little bit about what's available in terms of making sure that things are deliverable and also a little bit on spam. Beaver Builder has support and has had for a long time for Google's recapture version 3 back to October 2009. In fact, it's only just come to Gravity Forms. So there is that option, but it's not the option I prefer. And there is another technique. So I'll do another video on this, but here are the links for things to check out as well. Okay, let's get on to what I'm actually wanting to talk about here. So we'll go back to the top here. And what I'm going to do first is to turn on some of the options which aren't turned on by default. So we have the subject field which will show. So that is the field that will be populated onto your email up with the subject of your email. And we will also want to show, oh, I had the email hidden on that one because I was messing around earlier. We, there must be something else hidden, I think. Yeah, terms and conditions, we want to turn those on and we can add in our own and we get checkbox with that. And also we've got our success options. If we set it to none, we get a little text message, I think that says message sent. That's all that happens. If we put it to show a message, then we get a dialogue box over here so we can style that. Typically, I would have a redirect to a thank you page. So I'm gonna leave that. There is one other thing that I need to do. It is set to show the placeholders first. And I actually think that it's easier for styling to work with the labels because placeholders, are styled by individual browsers, so they're quite hard to deal with, but I'm gonna stick on both in this case. Same is true as well with our checkboxes as well, which we got difficult to style because browsers do that for us. Okay, let's save that. And what I'm gonna do is to take this CSS that I've got over here and copy this, place it into the module under the advanced. Now, what you need to be able to do this is have installed the BB code settings plugin, which is available from GitHub, which allows you to put CSS areas and JavaScript areas in your individual modules, columns, and rows. And you'll need that if you're using my Beaver Junction plugin. Okay, so let's save that. And here I'm just trying to visually represent the areas that are there with the selectors so you can do your own styling. In most cases, I'm not using much of what is there, but let me just talk through it. So starting from the outside first, there may be occasions where you might feel you need to actually style the background of the row itself. So there is a default for all modules, which is fl-modules-content. I've used that here a bit. I've put this Gainsborough darker gray here with 2% padding, but we can use the FL contact dash form as well, which I've got that ghost white and 5% over here. I think in most cases, and with my example that I've got over here, I'm using the column background to set an image and then I'm using this transparency so you can see it underneath that. That's probably mostly what you'll need to do because even if you need a different styling within a column, you can use a child column anyway to just style what you need there. But maybe the circumstances where you might need that. Then we move to the main areas here and I've marked those out with this border of magenta over here. It is the FL-input-group. And that marks out, as you can see, the magenta here on the name, on the subject, on the email, the phone, the message, and also our checkbox over here. So these are the main areas that we can select. And that's typically what I will be using. So I will often go for this class selector and then find inputs. Now the inputs include the name, subject, email, and phone, but not the message that is a text area. So I tend to use this. Let me just go into one of the forms so I can show you this. 
And that's all I need to do with the styling. So the input group there with input over here and then text area. In fact, I don't need that. It's probably overqualified on that. And then I can put my style in and it's going to apply to all of my areas there. So typically that's most of my styling is done by that. So that's the kind of main areas. But what we also have is we have some class selectors which are selecting out the main areas. So we've got this chocolate for the name. We have for the coral for the subject here. And I've gone on with each of these for the classes and I've marked them out. This selects the whole of the area. So it includes this main area which includes the input itself. If we want to select just the inputs, then we can go to the IDs which I've got over here instead the equal IDs will just affect this area what I've done in this particular case so you can see it is that I've taken the IDs and I have put a background color where the transparency is down to zero so we can see through it but otherwise we might want to use this to pick out the input areas themselves or just the message without having to specify that it's a text box. And that's exactly what I've done with the CSS here. I've just used the selectors because I'm just dealing with these kind of input areas and I can do that with the message without having to talk about inputs at all. Okay, so that's an option. So we've got those kind of two options and ways about going styling these kind of basic things we've also got labels as well i've turned these into white so these are the labels on the top and we've also got this selector as well where we can style the text over here and then we're back to the labels for this here so i kind of hope that makes sense of the main areas there are a couple of extra things which are hidden and which are the messages that we might see so if i just go and come out of this we can see that if i go and fill in i'll fill in this form um just go with the defaults on there i'm not going to put just put anything in da, da, da. and I shall tick the box and I will send this and hopefully we should see that I've got some style in on the message here in fact it's just set around the text itself so if we want to do that let's just go down here and find this so a success message we've got that and then we could style the paragraph in there of course I could put something in a div and do a lot more or images so I put this tomato color on here and I put some padding on it which you can't see just slightly off the screen let's just move along here so it kind of pads out that area so we can do that we can also as I mentioned if we selected this to none no kind of message at all it just outputs that text that we've got and that's the fl success none message so we can change the color of that if we want and that's it and also we can change our error messages as well if i just go and just go and make an error let's just try and send without filling anything in so we can change our error messages as well here so this is this thistle color I put over here so we've got this uh, contact error which we can apply to these okay so those are extra areas probably the one to really watch out or the two things to watch out for are the placeholder text here now this probably is something where I'd need to do some further research and there are some methods but because the browser's styling the placeholders and also the check box over here we can add placeholder text and style this as I have to make this black on here. But just be aware, this is working fine with this on the Chromium browser, so that the Chrome browser and Microsoft's Edge. But you might not necessarily get the same results if you are going over to Firefox, so it goes for this gray. So maybe one of the things that is often asked is, can you make the placeholder text a little bit darker on the default beaver builder but I think it's this kind of gray because it will work if you've got a dark background as well as a light background so I think it's a kind of compromise there so it's just something to be aware of there might be some extra steps to take you probably want to browse a test also and I won't get into that I've included some basic styling as well as the 
checkbox here, but it is really basic. It defaults back to what the Chrome browser is here and you'll see that you won't get that color in, in working on Firefox. So that's something to be aware of. The other thing as well is to just remember that if you're moving off the sort of defaults black and white here, we've got to remember the focus state. So when we click it into an area, it's very easy for them that just to turn white because we haven't styled our input. So if I just go back into this, um, okay, it's gonna play up a little bit with the browser caching. Okay, if we go into this one, what I've needed to do, because I've got a dark background on this, I've needed to, if I can find it, uh, I've needed to make sure that my focus is also set to dark with the white on this one. So I've selected again the input groups and the inputs on that one, put the focus on it, again the text area and focus, and then I've styled this. So when I go and click on there and the inputs are focused, then I've still got that dark background and the white on that. So you can play around and get some kind of nice effects with this. Let me just come and publish this and you know but is this is going a little bit darker and then i've got some white text on this okay i think i've probably covered all that i need to say on this i hope this was useful if anyone's a bit more of a css expert than me particularly experienced in dealing with forms then please let me know if there's something that we can add or something that i've got wrong and then i will add this to the main documentation but anyway thank you for your time today hope it was useful if it was then please give me a thumbs up on youtube and i hope to see you in another video have a great day Bye bye